Every now and then, Ducati produces a very special monster that rivals their superbikes in terms of Exotica. You might remember the S4 RS, a cult monster, but Ducati have just got one better and launched a new gem, the Monster 1200R. The R takes over from the S as the ultimate incarnation of the monster range. The headline figures are what you'd expect. Power is up by 15 horsepower to 160 thanks to revised pistons, airbox and exhaust. They've managed to knock 2 kilograms off the weight too. More power and less weight almost sells this monster short. It's the components that make this R a belter. The wheels are lightweight forged alloy. The subframe is a new, slimmer and lighter aluminium unit. The one-piece rider and pillion foot pegs from the S have been replaced with machine riders foot pegs and removable pillion pegs. The S's Pirelli Diablo Rosso 2 tyres have been replaced with 255 profile Pirelli Diablo Supercourse SP tyres, the exact ones you'll find on a 1299 Panigale. For the first time in a Monster, there's also a steering damper fitted. It's made by Olin's, as if you needed to ask. The suspension is similar to the S, fully adjustable Olin's front and rear, but the forks and shock are slightly longer, so the seat sits 20mm higher at 830mm, while the wheelbase is 2mm shorter. It's got the same electronics package as the S, three riding modes, ABS, traction control, and the same gorgeous and easy to use TFT display. The 1200R, like a strictly come dancing rugby player, has been through an intensive training plan to transform it from a sledgehammer to a scalpel. Despite the obvious exotic parts, I still had a feeling it would be a brutal tool rather than a sharp instrument. How wrong could I have been? The seat's tiptoe high for me and I'm just short of six foot and the bars are a reach forward rather than reaching down. It's upright, it's comfortable, it's roomy even. It doesn't feel like the bum up wrist down position you might associate with a fast lap or indeed any lap. Words can't do the engine justice. It sounds like a massive foghorn on an old steam ship. Power is increased but it's the torque and throttle response that really stand out. Torque is up from the Monster 1200S's 92 foot-pounds to 97 foot-pounds, and while the engine revs harder, it just doesn't need to be thrashed. The chassis and engine work so well together, it feels plush but poised, honed and not harsh. You can carry so much corner speed, you don't need to rip the throttle off between turns. The motor just twangs at a different pitch as you short shift and feed in the gears. This alone just gives a really surreal edge to the track experience. The baritone engine note and comparative lack of revs removes the frantic edge you get with most sports bikes. It tricks you into thinking you're not going that fast, while its looks will lead most people to think that it can't go that fast. The huge Brembo M50 calipers will stop anything, and corner entry is made simpler and later thanks to the wet slipper clutch, which helps scrub off those last few miles an hour after you've peeled in off the brakes. It's the same clutch as fitted to the S. I can remember needing two hands to operate the clutch on the S4 RS but you could operate the 1200Rs with just the bicep you've developed in your little finger. And that's good because you need to use the clutch more than you'd like to think, seeing as there's no quick shifter. I know, we've managed without quick shifters for years, but I opted to hang on to gears through some of Ascari's tricky corners rather than risk a half-baked upshift. Aside from stickier tyres, a quick shifter is about the only thing I think you could quickly add to a 1200R to make it lap faster. Ground clearance is better than any naked bike ought to need, but you wouldn't want any less because the 1200R is so capable, it just goads you to crank it over. I managed to bend the gear shifter back on one particularly tight left-hander, but I doubt you'd get anywhere near its limits on the road. Forget price for a moment and you need a really good reason to not buy the Ducati. It would give the KTM 1290 Super Duke R a run for its money in the performance stakes. When it comes to the Triumph Speed Triple, the Ducati is just as bling and beats it in terms of electronics. And at £15,250, the 1200R is £1,250 more expensive than the KTM, but a chunky £4,250 more than the Triumph. Sure, I know it's pricey, but this is a very special bit of kit. Don't be fooled into thinking it's just a better Monster 1200S. It's completely different to a 1200S. The S wouldn't see which way an R went if you put them head to head on track. For track days and out and out, you can't do that on that moments. Then I'd go for the 1200R every time.